Hi there, welcome to another week of TNT. We are in your book, Discovery of Grace, and this week we are in section 2.5, and we're talking about God's expectations told to us. What does God expect from us? So before we start, in your book, on page 97, there's a definition there given for expectation. This is what it says. The desire or belief that someone will do something. The desire or belief that someone will do something. So if you think about that for a second, think about grown-ups, maybe in Awana, maybe in school, maybe your parents. What expectations do your parents have? What do they expect from you? What do they desire? What actions or attitudes do they want you to have? Think about um, school for a second. Your teachers. Maybe you're homeschooled. Maybe you go to school. What do your teachers expect from you? Do they expect you to have a good attitude? Do they expect you to get your work done on time? Do they expect you to um, be kind, to not cheat? All those things probably are expected of you if you're homeschooled or if you go to school, whatever your school situation. How about your parents? Do your parents have expectations of you? Maybe they, hopefully, they expect you to respect them. To honor your parents. That's one of the commandments in the Bible. Honor your father and mother. How about do they expect you to make your bed every day or put your toys away or do your homework before you play? We all had expectations. I had expectations from my parents when I was growing up and I'm sure you do too. Maybe it's sports. Maybe think about sport you do. Soccer, baseball, dance, whatever. What kind of expectations do your coaches or your referees have for you? Play by the rules, have good sportsmanship, um, be kind, all of those things. And of course we want to win, but we want to do win with a good attitude, with a good heart, with good sportsmanship, not cheat, follow the rules, all that. We have expectations of us everywhere we go, every place we're in. Um, if you go to a store, they expect you not to steal. They expect you not to trash the store. They expect you to, um, most, most places expect you to have shoes on when you go in the store. There's expectations everywhere. What do you think would happen if we chose to ignore those expectations? What would, what would our world be like if every expectation that our parents or our coaches or our teachers or store owners or whatever if we just ignored their expectations, it'd be pretty chaotic, wouldn't it? We Expectations are important because it tells us what we're supposed to do, how we're supposed to act, the attitudes we're supposed to have, all of that. It's very, very important. So now the section is God's expectations told to us. So here's here we go. If you have accepted Jesus as your Savior, God has something big he expects out of you. Now, the good news is you're not going to do it on your own. And we'll get to that in a minute. But God expects you to be something. Let, let's look it up. It's in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 16. Let's read that. Since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. Now, Peter, the man who wrote this book, he's quoting a verse out of the book of Leviticus, where Moses wrote down bunch of the rules, the laws that he God had given to him to give to the people. So this wasn't a new thing that Peter is writing, but it's something that God expects of his people. Whether they lived a couple thousand years ago or whether they live today, God says we are to be holy because he is holy. So here's the thing. We can't do that on our own, right? We're all sinful. Romans tells us that we all sin. We all fall short of the glory of God. On our own, we cannot be perfect. We cannot be holy and without sin like God because we are people. God knows that we're not going to be perfect. He knows that we're going to sin, right? But he wants us to want to be holy. He wants us when we see something that we know we shouldn't do, he wants us to turn around and do something different. He wants us to turn aside from sin, to turn away from sin, and to do what he would do, to choose to be holy. Now, I said we can't do this on our own, right? We have to do this with God's help. So let's read your verse for the week. Psalm 25, verse 4. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. 
teach me your paths. This verse was written by David, and the Bible also tells us that David was a sinner, just like you and me. His sins are recorded. What he did wrong, how he sinned against God, is recorded in God's word. You can read about it. But here he is, he's praying, God, show me your ways. Show me what I'm supposed to do. Teach me your paths. Teach me the things that you want me to do. David trusted God completely. He desired, he wanted really, really bad to follow God with his whole heart. David asked God to help him understand what God expected him to do. And you know the cool thing is that we're told that David was considered, even though he was a sinner, he was considered a man after God's own heart because he did things like this, because he did things like ask, God, what am I supposed to do? Show me what I'm supposed to do. Even when it's really hard, show me what I'm supposed to do. There's another verse in Romans that I want us to look at. Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. Let's read that. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. What these verses are telling us is that we need to not let the world around us tell us who we are, change who we are, change our thinking, change our, our, our belief about what's right and what's wrong. Instead, we're supposed to be transformed by God, transformed by his word, transformed when we, when we choose to do what he wants us to do. God will change us and make us more and more like him. Um, and that, that will help us to know what is God's good and perfect and acceptable will for our lives. When we choose to follow Jesus, when we choose to follow what he wants us to do, he will help us and he will continue to show us his ways. Do you know what the word Awana stands for, where it came from? It's not just a name. It actually means something. So I'm going to read you a verse and then I'm going to tell you where the name Awana came from. It's 2 Timothy 2.15. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. Did you hear it in there? Approved workmen are not ashamed. A-W-A-N-A. -A. Approved workmen are not ashamed. If we're choosing to live a life set apart and follow God's expectations for us, he's going to show us what we're supposed to do. He's going to teach us the way we're supposed to go. And we will not be ashamed because the only opinion that matters is God's opinion. The world doesn't matter what they think about us. Only God's opinion matters about us. So God has expectations for us. And he wants us to be different than the world. He expects us to be holy because he is holy. He expects us to not be conformed to the world, to be different than the world, to be set apart from the world because he is holy and he is set apart from the world. So here's a couple examples because it's easy to talk about, but when you start thinking about your life, maybe it's a little harder sometimes. How about in a situation where a friend wants to cheat off you during a test? If you know that God expects you to be holy, expects you to be different, what are you going to do? Hopefully you said you're not going to let them cheat because that is not what God would want you to do. How about you're really frustrated with your brother? You heard somebody on the playground saying a bad word and you really want to call your brother that. What are you going to do? If you know God expects you to be holy, if you know that God expects you to not be like the world around you, hopefully you said you're not going to say the word. How about you know you have this really big decision and you don't know what to do and your leader says, pray about it. What do you do? If you want to be different, if you want to follow God's expectations, if you want to be holy, if you want to be not conformed to the world, you're going to pray about it. 
Your verse was a prayer. Psalm 25, 4 is a prayer. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. You can pray. When you don't know what to do, you can pray and you can ask God, God, help me to know what to do. Show me what I'm supposed to do and he'll help you. I promise you that he will help you. If we want to know what God expects out of us, we need to know what's in his word. And how do we know what's in here? We do things like go to Awana, go to church, listen to our parents or grandparents or whoever it is that's taking us to Awana. We read our Bibles. We do our Awana books. We learn our verses. We pray and we talk to God. That sounds like a lot, but really it's very simple. Because the more you spend time with God, the more you get to know his expectations, the more you're going to want to do what he wants you to do. The more you learn about God, the more you're going to want to be holy and set apart and different than the world around you. <clears throat> My prayer for you is that you will ask God to show you what you're supposed to do. When a friend's being bullied, when you're being bullied, God, show me your ways. Teach me what I'm supposed to do. When things aren't going great at home and you just, you don't know what to do. You feel lonely and just, un, un, there's no peace. God, show me, show me your ways. Teach me what I'm supposed to do. God's there for you every second of every day. Let me pray for you. God, I thank you for your expectations because what you expect out of us is for our best. You're a good God and you love us so deeply. God, help us to remember, including myself, help me to remember that when we don't know what to do, that we can pray and we can ask you and you're there to help us. You're there to show us and lead us and help us understand what we're supposed to do. Thank you, God, that as we learn from your word and we um, fall deeper in love with you, that you are going to make us not ashamed, that we will be approved in your sight and your sight is the only one that matters. God, we love you. Thank you for Awana. Thank you for your, for your word that teaches everything that we need to know. God, we love you. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. See you next time.